Take a look at these breathtaking views of the desert. When you think of the desert, what comes to mind? Yes, sand. The Earth's crust is largely made of sand. Sand is a form of silicon. Silicon is the second most common element on Earth after oxygen. Where else can we find silicon? In this unit, you are going to learn the example of the Take a look at this construction site. The workers are putting the cement and sand into the mixer. There are bricks on the ground beside the uncompleted building. Do you know what cement, sand, glass, and bricks are made of? Silicon is the second most common element in the Earth's crust. Silicon exists in the form of compounds called silica and silicate. Silica is also known as silicon dioxide. Silica contains the elements silicon and oxygen. What are examples of silica? Click on the photos to find out. Jasper, flint, quartz, sand. Silicate contains the elements silicon, oxygen, and metal. What are examples of silicate? Click on the photos to find out. Clay, topaz, jade, asbestos, mica, ruby. Remember the things you saw at the construction site? Cement, sand, glass bottles, and bricks are all silicon compounds. Complete the following sentences. Drag the choices below and drop them into the boxes given. Based on the picture clues below, key in the name of the minerals into the correct silicon form. Press the check button to see the answers. Click true or false. Silicon can come or false. Silicon compounds exist as silica and silicate. Silica contains silicon and oxygen. Silicate contains silicon, oxygen, and metal. Examples of silica are sand, quartz, flint, and jasper. Examples of silicate are asbestos, mica, clay. Examples of silicate are asbestos, mica, clay, jade, topaz, and ruby. This Formula One car is on fire. The driver has managed to escape. But look, his suit is not burned at all. And the driver is safe. Why doesn't the driver's suit get burned? Let's carry out an activity to observe the solubility of silica and silicates. Click on Sand.
Did the sand dissolve in water? Write down your observation in your activity sheet. Now, click on quartz. Did the quartz dissolve too? Let's try clay. Click on Did the clay dissolve in water? Finally, try asbestos. Did the asbestos dissolve too? None of these silicon compounds dissolved in water. This shows that most silica and silicates are insoluble. Let's carry out an activity to observe how silica and silicates react with acid. Click on sand. Did the sand react with acid? Write down your observation in your activity sheet. Now, click on Quartz. Did you observe any reaction? Let's try clay. Click on the button. Did clay react with acid? Finally, try asbestos. Did asbestos react with acid? All the silicon compounds showed no reaction. This shows that most silica and silicates do not react with acid. Let's carry out an activity to observe how silica and silicates react to heat. Click on Sand. What did you observe? Write down your observation in your activity sheet. Now, click on Quartz.
What did you observe? Let's try clay. Click on the button. Do you observe anything? Finally, try asbestos. What did you observe? There are no changes to the silicon compounds and the glowing splinter goes off after a while. This shows that most silica and silicates do not break down on heating. Based on the previous activities, we have learnt that silica and silicates do not dissolve in water, do not react with acid, and do not break down on heating. We can conclude that silica and silicates are stable compounds. Silicon compounds are widely used in daily life due to their stability. Can you give examples of how silicon compounds is used daily? Click on each picture to find out more. Remember the F1 accident? Why didn't the driver's suit get burned? The suit did not burn because it is made of fireproof material called high silica fiber glass. This material can withstand very high temperatures. Fireproof material can be made with silicon compounds such as glass because these compounds are stable. Heating the clay only dries it but does not cause the clay to break down. The stability of silicon compounds such as clay allows craftsmen to make uniquely designed yet durable craft work. There are seven silicon compounds in this puzzle. Click on the check button to solve the puzzle. When sand is added into a test tube, In this lesson, you have learned that silicon compounds are stable because they are insoluble in water, do not react with acids, and they do not break down on heating. Some examples of silicon compounds used in our daily life are glassware, gemstones, insulators, microchips, ceramic, and fireproof material. Which of these is a silicate? Click on Click on one of the questions to see the answer. Silicon combines with other elements to form compounds known as silica and silicates. Silica is made up of silicon and oxygen. Silicate is made up of silicon, metal and oxygen. Can you name these examples of silica? Click on the pictures to find out. Flint Sand, Jasper, Quartz. Can you name these examples of silicate? Click on the pictures to find out. Topaz, Mica, Clay, Ruby, Asbestos, Jade.
silicon compounds are insoluble in water, do not react with acids, and do not break down when heated. Silicon compounds are very stable. Silicon compounds are used in many ways in our daily lives. Click on the photos to find out. Topaz, rubies, and jade are used as jewelry. Sand is used to make cement and mortar. Clay is used to make clay pots and bowls. Asbestos make good fireproof material for fireman's suit. Quartz is used to make glassware and ceramic. Silicon is used to make microchips in computers and fiber optics for telecommunication cables. Silicon is used to make contact lenses. Find out what types of silicon compound is used to make contact lenses. What are the different types of contact lenses available in the market? Can you use silicon as an artificial cornea or lens in eye surgery? What other artificial organs and limbs can be made using silicon? One of the major uses of silicon in this technological world is in the making of microprocessors or microchips. Silicon compound such as sand is processed to make high-grade industrial silicon. This processed silicon is used to make microchips. Watch this short animation about how sand is used to make microchips. Then answer the questions in your activity sheet. A microchip is a small piece of silicon with an embedded integrated circuit. Most typical chips are less than a square inch big, but has millions of tiny electronic components. Let's begin the journey. Raw silicon, such as sand, is chemically processed to make high-grade purified silicon. The raw silicon is melted, processed, and then cooled to make silicon ingots. Then the ingots are thinly sliced into wafers. Wafers are then polished until flat with mirror-like surfaces. These wafers then go through the etching process where the design of the microprocessor is imprinted onto them. Then the wafer goes through a layering process to create a 3D design of the circuit, each layer different from each other. This process takes several weeks and then the wafer is sent for testing. After testing, the wafer is cut into rectangles called die. Each has a complete circuit design. The microchip is then packaged to protect it. The completed microchip is later mounted on circuit boards. And that is how simple grains of sand can operate your computer.